Nearly seven months after Vicky and Gus Angel were married. The place, a full house. The plot, a missed deal. Ah! <laughs> Six plots in a row, come on. But by luck, it's a wonder I ain't beautiful. <laughs> Lover, anybody says you ain't beautiful, has got to fight me. Yeah. I get more fights that way. <laughs> Any of them? Okay. There we are. Hey, that's mine. What's the difference? It's all community property. <laughs> all right, Cassie, let's not get jerky about it. Are you looking for a fat lip lover? <laughs> uh, Cassie tells me your son's due home from the Navy pretty soon, Merton. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, uh, we don't know exactly when. You know, we haven't seen him in about two years. You'll love him, but he, he's a wonderful kid. That kind of knocks me out a little, too, because he's got such a penny-pinching miser for a mother. And his father's about to meet with a nasty accident. I got news for you. His father is married to a nasty accident. Yeah? Yeah. When you get tired of him, kids, just throw him out in the alley with the rest of the trash. <laughs> You forgot to say goodbye to Gus and Vicky. That dame's got absolutely no manners. Good night, kids. We had a swell time. <laughs> How can people live that way? Beats me. I know I couldn't. <laughs> what a thing to say to your husband. You looking for a fat lip. <laughs> Lover, that's the word that frosted me. <laughs> You're looking for a fat lip lover? <laughs> Gus, if we ever talked like that to each other, I'd think the world was coming to an end. Oh, honey, that'll be the day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I loved it when you harpooned me with that crack. His father's going to meet with a nasty accident. <laughs> Oh, that was beautiful. His father's married to a nasty accident. <laughs> That's the one I like. <laughs> you got a good, quick mind, lover. <laughs> hey, oh. did I leave my purse over at Vicky's? Oh, that purse of yours never stays put. Sometimes I think it's a lie. Well, it ain't here. I must have left it there. Well, there's one way to find out. You know, lover, I'm really worried about those two kids. Who, Gus and Vicky? Yeah. What for? Well, oh, oh, Vicky, Mur, yeah. Did my fat-headed wife leave her purse up there? <laughs> oh, good, good. I'll be right up and get it. Oh, you don't have to do that. Oh, really? It, it... Okay. Thanks. She's bringing it down. Oh, well. Now, what are you worried about them for? Oh, lover, you won't believe this. But do you know those kids have been married for almost seven months and they ain't even had one fight with one another yet? Well, so they've been married for... No. You're kidding. No, she told me in so many words. How can people live like that? <laughs> Beats me. It's only common sense that you've got to clear the air once in a while. I think they know that. Well, I was wondering, Murph, do you suppose maybe you might have a little talk with Gus and... In a nice way and so Oh, of... sure. Gee, I'd hate to see those kids break up. Oh, so would I. Well, that must be a stranger. Everybody else knows to use the back door. Enter, friend. Here's the purse. Where's Cassie? She, uh, left me for a stranger. <laughs> you just let her go? She'll be back. Me and Cassie have been talking. Is it true that you and Gus never had a fight? Mother! Emma's on his way! Our baby's what? on his way! Oh, Vicky, our baby's coming home! Oh, Cassie, I'm happy. Oh, I'm happy for 
full size. <laughs> Mike, my boy, Mike. Wait till you see him, Becky. Oh, this kid's got strength. He's got a built like iron. All his nails, any he Oh, it? Emmett's a great boy. <laughs> Wait a minute, which one's coming home, Emmett or Mike? Both of them. Emmett Michael Murphy. The Emmett was her idea. His real name is Mike Murphy. Becky, this kid. This kid is so tough that when he joined the Navy, they put three destroyers in mothballs. <laughs> A real sea-going Paul Bunyan. <laughs> Are you kidding? The Navy don't take guys with bum feet. <laughs> Here's a picture of him when he joined up. Oh, he was just learning how to shave. <laughs> Turn off the waterworks, will you? Here, let me see that wire. Doesn't say anything about the time. All it says he's coming in on uh, uh, San Pedro on the 23rd. That's tomorrow. I know what day it is. I just don't know what time it is. You never did. <laughs> You're going to get smart again, aren't we? Uh, isn't there some way of checking on the time? I'm going down at sunrise to the pier and wait for my baby to get off that boat. If Mike hears you call his ship a boat, he'll give you a belt right between the eyes. Just try it. <laughs> and get another thing through that cardboard skull of yours. Mike ain't no baby. I'll call my baby my baby any time I want to call my baby my baby. And you won't... Stop. His name is Michael Murphy. I gave it to him. And I'll give you a fat lip, love. Now watch it. How do you do? I, I'm terribly sorry to bother you so early in the morning. My name is Murphy. Well, of course it is. Come on in. Thank you. I'm Vicki Angel. Oh, I know. Mother's written of you in glowing terms. Uh, honey, Murphy's boy is here. Would you sit down, Miss Mike? Come on. Emma. Sorry. Oh, honey, um, this is Mr. Angel. <laughs> Hi, uh, we were just talking about you. How do you do, sir? <laughs> nice to finally meet you, Mike. Emmett. <clears throat> uh, did you miss connections with your folks? Well, evidently. I left a note on the door for them. I took the liberty of saying I'd be up here. Oh, that's all right, Mike. Emmett. <laughs> <laughs> well. <clears throat> You're from... You're almost as big as your dad said you would be. <laughs> Say, he's going to be proud of this. Oh, what does the other guy look like? This happened with the trombone, sir. <laughs> a trombone? Don't they use fists in the Navy anymore? <laughs> oh. I'm afraid I've given you the wrong impression. No, you see, the flutes sit right in front of the trombones. <laughs> well, the, the trombone player, re he reached for a low note. Well, when he came back, he caught me with a saliva valve. <laughs> felt terrible about it. I can imagine. Then you play the flute. Yes, ma'am. I'm a musician first class. We play all the ship's concerts. This happened right in the middle of Claire de Lune. Claire de Lune? How long has it been since you've seen your father, your folks... Oh, about two years. I've been traveling all over the world. Does your dad know that, um, uh, I'll bet your dad is proud you made musician first class, huh? <laughs> well, mother thought it expedient not to tell him. Of course, I'll straighten that out now that I am back. Well, say, I wonder if I may bring my sea bag in. I left it outside till I was sure you were home. Well, certainly, Emma. Bring it in. Oh, say... This is a beautiful piece of Teotian bronze. It is? Uh, thank you. Oriental sculpture's my hobby, you know. We should have asked to see his identity card. That kid's an imposter. <laughs> Poor Murph. The worst thing that could happen to him, he has a son with manners. <laughs> Here we are. I brought a few things back. I want you to see something. The things I brought for you. Oh, say, this is my flute. It's a gen <laughs> Honey? Honey, isn't it nice? <laughs> See, it's just Jensen right there. I hear they're swell. <laughs> well, I gotta get going. <laughs> you know, Mother told me so much about you. 
I want you to have this. That? For me? Well, it's a, it's a figurine. It represents the goddess of patience. You see, in Korea, they have a little... Oh, oh, my oh, my oh here they come. Oh, 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 Anyway, we got all the way to San Pedro, couldn't find hide the hairy of both. Oh. <laughs> we just had a sudden change in orders, Dad. They, we can't off at Long Beach. Oh. oh, well, you're here now, anyway. <laughs> oh, what did I tell you, Becky? What's the other guy look like? Oh, six feet, 190 pounds. Little guy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> he hit you with a brick? No, sir, a trombone. Oh, <laughs> them trombones are murder. I remember a little brawl we got into at a dance hall, and would you believe it, Mike, this guy tried to jam a trombone into my ear. You told him that when he was three years old. Well, I guess I did. Well, we can swap remittances later. <laughs> What's the uh, nickel-plated plumbing for? <laughs> That's my flute, sir. What? Uh, look, look what Emmett brought me. Mike. Nice of you, kid. Only one? Where's the one for the pepper? <laughs> That's a figurine, Dad. You see, it, it's, uh, it represents the goddess of patience. According to Korean superstition, she embodies the enigma of tranquility. <laughs> Something like the, uh, the Griselda of Italy. He didn't mean nothing by it, lover. You're trying to get jazzy with your old man, son? <laughs> well, I was hoping you would, because big as you are, I can still take you on. Now, come on, put up them dudes. Can't do it, Dad. I have to watch my fingers now. Your fingers? What's the matter with them? One, two, three. Oh, well, they're all there. I need them for my flute. Oh. Mike? Mike was telling me he's traveled all over the world. Emmett. Now, what's all this jazz about a flute? Well, you might as well know, lover. Emmett plays the flute in the Navy band. I would have told you before, but I was afraid you'd pop your cork. <laughs> Why should I pop my cork? So Admiral tells him to play a flute, he plays a flute. So, one of the musicians conks you with a trombone, huh? Well, something like that, sir, uh, Dad. It was right in the middle of Claire de Lune. They shouldn't allow dames aboard a ship. <laughs> you got in your bag, Emma? Yeah, Mike. I've got something here for you, Mom. Oh, something for me? A pair of beans? Oh, like oh, a pair of beans! Oh, Daddy, they're beautiful! Oh, it's so elegant, Vicky. Did you bring me a gun or a sword or something like that? Oh, here's something else for you, lover. No, no, that's for you, Dad. <laughs> You know what he's trying to do, though. He's trying to get me into a fight so he can beat my brains out. <laughs> hey, I'll have a try it on. Really, sir, it's for you. <laughs> Mike, you've been gone a long time, so maybe you forgot. I don't wear nightgowns. <laughs> it's a bathrobe. Merv, it's a beautiful oriental bathrobe. Well, I don't take oriental baths. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. Look at this thing. Oh, look at this. Oh, there I came. Look at this thing. It's crawling with bugs. <laughs> they're, they're not bugs, Dad. They're oriental butterflies. This group was used symbolically by the Ming Dynasty. I know Navy talk, and that ain't it. There you are. Well, I hope you're satisfied. Here. I look like an Irish snake. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. It's, it's swell, honest. You get you dead. What's the hand? Uh, you sure I can't fix you a little bit of breakfast or something? Oh, no, thanks, Vicky. I've got to get my baby home. Come on, honey. I'm glad to have you home. Vicky, I need your advice. I don't know what to do. So what, honey? Emmett and Merv. It's just fight, fight, fight. Emmett's been home for a week now, and here's what happened. 
Murph comes home from work, and maybe he sees Emma writing a letter to this girl he's got in Philadelphia. Evelyn, if you ask me, she's the real troublemaker. <laughs> Did he miss college girls? Well, anyhow, Murph catches him writing this letter, and he gets real clever. And he says, okay, we know you can write. We've seen the pen. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe Emma's practicing on his flute. And Murph says, what are you trying to be, the Pied Piper of Hamilton? <laughs> what do you think I should do? Oh, I'm certainly not qualified to give that kind of advice. Sure you are. I'd really rather not really, Cassie. Well, look, honey, the Murphy family is in big trouble. If you've got any ideas, fill them. Well, all right. It occurred to me that maybe if you just all sat down around a table and, and discussed the situation... Oh, talk and never solved anything. Well, maybe you could explain to Murph that, that an education isn't a crime. Yeah. And that uh, manners are an asset. And, and yeah. Emmett's changed for the better. Yeah. Well, all Emmett has to do is just pop his cork once and the whole thing's solved. <laughs> <laughs> but you're contradicting yourself. You just said you didn't want that. Now, if you could get Murph to control himself and... Well, forgive me, Kathy, but if you'd control yourself... Oh, yeah? <laughs> Who asked you? <laughs> Well, you did, remember? Well, let me tell you something, little Miss Busybody. Everybody in this neighborhood's talking about you and Gus. What? Everybody's saying that your marriage won't last a year, unless you bust loose at one another every now and then and say what you really think. Who's everybody? Me and Murph. <laughs> and incidentally, the next time I need your advice, I'll ask for it. <laughs> Murph, you've never come down here to my office before and you've been sitting here giving me double talk for five minutes. Now, why don't you say what you came down here to say? No, oh, Gus, honest, I... I was just going by, so I thought I'd drop in. Glad you did. See you later. So long, Murph. Gus. Yeah? What kind of a Navy are they running these days? <laughs> Murph, the Navy's as tough as ever. Only they're leaning a little bit more to education, that's all. You ain't kidding. You know what that stupid kid of mine done? What? He went to the library and brought home a book. <laughs> First, I thought it was all about Italian baseball, but it wasn't. Italian baseball? Yeah, something about the decline and fall of a Roman umpire. <laughs> well, it wasn't about baseball, and I yelled at him. You know, Gus, I've been yelling at that kid all week. And all he keeps telling me is, Dad, you're tight. Dad, you're tight. <laughs> Gus, the kid just ain't got it. Murph, uh, most parents want the respect you're getting. What do you want them to do? I want them to belt me just once! <laughs> Is that asking too much? <laughs> Why, the flutie's supposed to go to a football game for me, or is that too carnival for him? What's the matter with you? Oh, too carnival for him. At it again, I just don't understand it. I'll say this much, though. Murph has a point. Seems to me it wouldn't hurt the kid any to act tough once in a while just for Murph's sake. No. Murph's the one who has to make the adjustment. I don't quite agree with you, sweetheart. I'm a little surprised at you. But you didn't see Kathy's face when she asked for advice. Bologna and lettuce. Just checking. <laughs> Look who's here. Hi. Oh, folks. Here, and they're at it again. I thought I'd come over here and do a little sketching if it wouldn't disturb you. Well, of course not, Emma. Uh, you know, glad to have you, Mike. <laughs> you know, they're the most wonderful parents in the world. But it's kind of nice to come down here where things are discussed instead of wrangled over. May I see this? Sit down, Emma. I'm going to send that to Evelyn when I finish with it. You know, she likes flowers. But this is beautiful. Thanks. Uh... Has your dad found out you do this sort of thing? Well, no. I figured I caused enough trouble with the flute. <laughs> Is 
really caught the feeling of those roses. Look at this. They're all bologna and lettuce. Very good, Mike. Oh, thank you. Well, Mike, you make up your mind whether you're going or not? <laughs> I got two things for the football game. Well, I'd, I, I'd kind of like to finish this, Dad. <laughs> Flowers? <laughs> well, la de da <laughs> What else can you expect from a kid who whistles through plumbing? I think Emma did very well. When he gets through with the cartoons, we'll take a nice muscle building trip to the library. You know, I remember when me and this kid used to talk the same language. Not no more. That's a wonderful guy. He doesn't mean it when he talks to... You shouldn't misunderstand. He's... Excuse me, please. You know, Murph is blaming the Navy for all this. I think it's that Philadelphia Evelyn's fault. You make Philadelphia sound awfully stuffy. I'm, I think Cassie's right. I don't think you heard me, sweetheart. I said I haven't anything against Philadelphia, the girl. Don't let her get you down, lover. I'll go to the football game with you. Uh, I don't want to go. Dad, what do you want? We still got time to make that football game? What? Are you going to take me to that football game, or do I got to belt you? <laughs> oh, baby! Well, welcome home, boy. That's a real dumbbell. Uh, Why do you pick me up on everything I say? I don't pick you up on anything. You want you to tell me that I hate Philadelphia? You're I have nothing against Philadelphia. Well, I didn't know better. I think that was Vicky and Gus. It is. Let's go referee. Come on. Let's go. I know you can. You're so smart. What's wrong with Seattle? Seattle? Where did Seattle come from? All I said was there were a few stuffy people in any city, like Indianapolis or Fresno. How did Seattle get into it? Because I went through there with my folks and a nicer bunch of people you've never met in your life. I suppose you were eight years old like you were in Philadelphia? I was five and a half, but I remember it. And if Philadelphia was good enough for Benjamin Franklin, it ought to be good enough for you. I wasn't five and a half when I was in Philadelphia, so I don't remember Benjamin Franklin. Of course you don't. You're so busy opening sandwiches, you wouldn't remember anybody. Get back to Benjamin Franklin so you can tell Gus to go fly a kite. <laughs> and when I want your advice, I'll ask for it. How can I see what's in a sandwich if I don't open it? You can have a little faith in your wife. Aha! Uh -huh. Peanut butter! Peanut butter, yes! Yeah, you told me it was baloney! Baloney! You am it, Michael Murphy? And you stay out of this! Yeah! Wait a minute! What's my baby done? Your baby started a brawl a minute he docked at Long Beach. You know, the Marine Corps is on our side, buddy. <laughs> Just a minute, Admiral. That happens to be my boy. Yeah. I'm sorry, sir. He's on terminal leave, but he's still in the Navy. I'll have to take him along. You started a brawl with Marine? <laughs> I'm sorry, Dad. That's why I've been trying to control my temper ever since I come home. <laughs> All right, come on, son. <laughs> <laughs> you two kids at each other's throat, and they drag my boy off to the bridge. <laughs> That's what I call a happy ending. <laughs> Honey. Yeah? You know I didn't mean one word of what I said, don't you? <laughs> of course I do. I didn't either. You know something funny? What? I never felt better in my whole life. <laughs> Got a 
date with an angel, gonna meet her at seven. Got a date with an angel, and I'm on my way to heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, your Plymouth dealer invites you to watch the Lawrence Welk program Top Tunes and You Tell It on this same network. Tom Kennedy speaking. Good night, everybody.